G'day guys. Today we're doing a bit of testing the riding of the Wolf Warrior 10 or the Wolf Warrior X, which is the baby brother of the Wolf Warrior 11. A little bit smaller in size and also motors. We're going to put it through its paces on some of this gravel road today. Um, some hills. And we'll see how it fares. So what we're looking at today is 1100 watts per motor um, in this Carbo Wolf Warrior. So that's activated obviously with the with the button. Um, and if you're familiarized with the carbo equipment, uh, you would know how that operates, so it's just a button here. Um, so I'll put it in single now. And that's single motor mode. So that's 1100 watts going towards the rear motor. And then if we stick it in dual motor mode there, we will actually increase that power to 2200 watt which is pretty quick so do at the moment currently sitting at around about 20 odd kilometers an hour just taking it a little bit easy at this stage This is a cracker of the day. Quite warm though. Um, we are expecting some rain this afternoon. We're in far north Queensland. Just look at the taps a bit here on this straight, on the road. We are doing 50 kilometers an hour. Surprisingly, the Wolf Warrior 10 is very, very stable um, on this gravel road. We're coming down this downhill section here. The great thing about the Wolf Warriors, um, in, in all their models, the three models that they do sell in, is the um, hydraulic braking. I mean, you only have to press that with one finger and that will uh, slow you down and, and bring you to a stop. Well, I've done a bit of riding on the Wolfwire 11, around about 70, 80 kilometers on it or so. And what a powerful machine. Um, what I do find though, is that it's almost overpowered. Um, after about 20 kilometers of riding it, I do feel quite worn out. Um, so I'm hoping that with the Wolf Warrior 10, with the shorter deck, a little bit less power, um, I'm hoping that this is a little bit more comfortable. And so far, it's actually proven to be the case. Just with that smaller deck size, I do feel it is more nimble in the corners. that 1100 watts of power going to each wheel there is no trouble whatsoever getting up these hills even with the mild corrugation going on in the corners there um, you do feel it now, when you're going over bumps and stuff you do have a little have to be a little bit careful because the wheels will sort of go where they want to go so just want to be a little bit careful there, but eating that up quite easily. Make it up the hill. I mean, this is only around about 5% oh, gradient. Realistically, it's really not that steep. But if you're walking, it would be a completely different scenario. We go into a bit of bitch room here. We'll open the taps a little bit. See what she's got. 
Um, I do find with the Wolf Warrior X or the Wolf Warrior 10, the Speedo does have a hard time keeping up with it. A slight wobble at around about 60 odd kilometres, but still quite firm. in the single motor mode. Now I'm doing around about 25 kilometers an hour. You're looking at around about 70 kilometers of range. Obviously that depends on how you're riding it. Um, right now we're in eco mode, single motor mode, doing 25 kilometers an hour. Look, I believe that you'll probably get 70 kilometers, maybe if not more, if you're just padding around like this. But when you do switch it, and turn the turbo mode on, and then the dual motors, On the dirt here, going down this, going down this hill. What a great little ride this is! Let's go over this little causeway. Really great swimming spot through here. No crocs. Well, none that I know of. As we get back up into the hill. Now the the Wolf Warrior 10 is going really, really well. I mean, we can't get confused with it being a motorbike here. It is still an electric scooter at the end of the day. just performing great. Yeah, definitely compared to the Wolf Warrior 11, it's a lot more forgiving on the accelerator. Um, well, it's not putting out as much power. I do believe that this 10 has enough power for what you want to do with it in most places. Get up the hill. And you're just hearing that front wheel spinning, looking for grip, eventually finding it, putting it down, and then into the corner. And then open up the taps again. How about we 
test these brakes, eh? So, I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, this is a loose surface. You're not going to stop that quick. Now, look, I would recommend riding with caution when you're riding over stuff like this, um, even if it's a bit rougher. Just because those 10 inch wheels, they do tend to want to follow the terrain. And sort of slip here and there, lose grip here and there. But it makes a thrilling ride. mighty good fun. We're just going to slow it down here, bring it back into eco, single motor mode. Um, look, there's a few bells and whistles on this Wolf Warrior 10, much like the Wolf Warrior 11. So you get your indicators, you've got spotlights here which work really well in the dark, um, you've got a fantastic horn, very very loud, really loud. So we'll see what this thing can do, going into eco mode, Single wheel, single 1100 watts going up this bit of a hill here. That's around about 12, 15 percent in gradient, and it's oh, it's struggling a bit. It's struggling, but it's it's making it. It's making it. And it definitely did it. Definitely did it. Turbo back on, still in single single motor mode. And in single motor mode, it's really, really comfortable. Really comfortable. And you don't have to worry about, you know, how much throttle you're putting on and that sort of stuff. You can just hold that thing down. I think we're gonna need a bit more speed. So we'll just stick single motor mode back on. Well, don't want wobble. 
just cope with it. Okay, so here we go. She doesn't have as much power, to be honest. I mean, there are some disadvantages though. Um, the locking mechanism is a standard locking mechanism, not like the Wolf Warrior 11. Exactly like what you'll find on the Mantis. Um, it just uses two of them. Um, it does take a while to fold it up and, um, and unfold it and fold it. The display of the Wolf Warrior 11 is better using the Mini Motors display. This is just using a regular, uh, regular display that you see on pretty much all the electric scooters. Um, it doesn't keep up when you're going full throttle with it. It just goes in like increments of 10 or 15, whatever it chooses, and then it will tell you what you do at what speed you're doing. And these are all really minor things. The ride itself is actually really, really good. Really, really stable. doing right now is showing you how well the lights work on this wolf warrior. Um, of all the scooters that we carry, I do believe that uh, they have the best lights. Um, this spotlight, double LED spotlight, you can see it there. So it is a very direct pencil beam. And obviously, it will point in the direction the handlebars are pointed. But very bright, and quite handy. Um, also to that, we've got the, the deck lights there, uh, which give you a little bit of vision around the actual deck um, and in the immediate vicinity of the actual um, of the scooter. This makes night riding really, really easy. Um, not only so you can see where you're going, but so other people can see you. Especially with the under deck LED lights there, which will flash a different color. Now that's actually programmable with an app and your phone. You just connect the two together and you can select color schemes and, and yeah, that's what you want it to do. If you want it to stay one solid colour, um, which I'd probably prefer than this sort of multi-coloured Christmas tree thing going on here. Um, this is factory. And as you can see, when we do hit the brakes, everything lights up, including the tail lights, which you can't actually see. What I do notice about riding at night with these lights is that you need to wear some sort of goggles um, if it's out, out in a rural area like this because there's that many insects that are like flying into my face through my helmet right now 